head, you get a different experience when voice acting is not there. Because hearing the voices in your head is a different experience in itself uh, versus hearing it out loud. Um, that is why at the end of the game, when you hear Monica talk, I, um, and of course like sing Your Reality, I like my first thought when I decided to do that was like, this might not work well because people are gonna have their own voice for Monica through the entire game, like in their head, you know? Um, or just not have a voice for her. And then they finally hear, their t hear her talk and they're like, oh wow, she sounds like so different from what I imagined, you know? Um, and there's sort of like a disconnect there. And it, I was afraid that that would kind of like ruin the moment. And for some people, like they, they definitely experienced that. But I was like, you know, I was thinking like, okay, like I understand that downside, but it's a sacrifice that I uh, feel that I need to make in order to like kind of make the ending the way that I want to make it. Uh, so that's definitely something that I thought about. I love when I love when Monica just like flies into the scene and like just interrupts whatever's going on, you know. And of course, in some of the later exclusive scenes, she like does it on purpose to basically like I don't know, uh, break the romance between MC and the other character. It's just I don't know. It was always fun like kind of throwing that in there because the uh, the reader is like, yes, it's happening, and then she just like swoops in from the side, and they're like, oh my god, come on, Monica. Yeah, Monica never had like a route because. The whole point of the game is that she doesn't, you know? That's the reason that the game has a plot. The plot is centered around the fact that she is not obtainable. Monica was really fun to write during the poem responses because her responses are like, um, they are, once again, like, at this point in the game, like, with Monica being like, she's supposed to come across as, like, the guide character, you know? Or, like, kind of the mascot of the game who helps you along, like, to, you know, pick the girl that you want or whatever. And so she, like, talks more about <laughs> the other girls and it's like oh this is what those characters like you know and so you know you seem to be getting along with them and stuff like that so she's kind of like like the tutorial character if that makes sense and that's like the way that her her dialogue is framed for this you know so she's like oh this is something Sayuri would like so it's like in case you're not picking up on like the way the poem minigame works or like how to go for your character she like or you want to go for a different character she like kind of explains like what each character likes in the vocabulary. And she teases you a little bit. She's like, oh, do you like her? And stuff like that. Um, and she she gets like more more intense with that, like if you keep going for the same character, you know, because she's like starting to get jealous. It's almost like she understands her role as club president and thus being like the person who's like leading you through the game. But she's like ha also having a hard time like uh, holding back her, her uh, jealousy or her envy of the, the player getting so many scenes with all the other characters. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Already like breaking the fourth wall a little bit. It's so much fun to just like sneak those tiny little things in there that could be like taken in proper context, but also like thinking about it in that context is like, I don't know. And of course it's obvious enough that like all of Monica's poems are about, um, you know, her like epiphany or the situation that she's in. She says that directly to you, I think, in act three as well. She never really talks about what her poems are about. Like the other characters, like, you know, it's it's kind of more obvious what they're about or they at least explain it. But Monica's like, you know, when the protagonist is like, oh, what's it about? She's like, oh, well, you know, it's just like kind of about this feeling that I had or whatever. He's like, what's the inspiration? And she's like, I had some kind of epiphany. Um, you know, that's pretty literal, but she obviously like doesn't go into more detail than that. And she kind of hides it behind like, oh yeah, like, you know, I don't want to get like too dramatic because when you're like, when you just make friends with someone, you want to like, you want to ease into that sort of thing. You don't want to like, um, like dump all of your emotions onto them like right after you meet them. Cause it's not, it's not like the mutual rapport that can be good for building friendships and Monica's conscious of that. Or that's the way that she's framing it anyway. Really, she probably just like understands that her best chance at getting, you know, what she wants or needs is to play along with the game a little bit more and like kind of find her chance and like just learn a little bit more about what's going on so she doesn't want to like jump right into like you know breaking the fourth wall and like ruining the player's experience along the way. One of Monica's uh like monologues was actually non-existent in the code and so if it was like if the like it randomly picked that that monologue item the game would crash right and every time you restarted the game it would try to pick that same monologue item and the game would just keep crashing and you just could not talk to Monica anymore. And I saw that as like a pretty glaring, glaring error because I wanted people, people who wanted to like spend time in Act 3, I wanted them to be able to keep doing that. But I fixed that or 
or maybe announced that I was going to fix it. And I, I received this email from someone who, and it was like, they were asking me to not fix that bug because they said, that bug happened to me. And it was a really important part of my experience when playing through the game because it felt like just an additional piece of the futility of what Monica's trying to do. And a way of, you know, forcing her away, like, you know, just another force that, that prevents her from achieving her dream and, and it tells the player that they need to move on and do what they need to do. They said it was like a, a really important thing for them to experience that, that they like couldn't be forever with her because that's like not, not how things are supposed to turn out. And they're like, oh, Monica has a boyfriend. They don't like say it outright, but it's implied. It was also, it was, it was nice to kind of have that scene without like Monica being directly involved because Monica is, you know, um, she's sort of, you know, she's like the leader and she like kind of wants people to be on track. And I think that sort of goofing off between all the other four characters is like not quite as possible when like Monica is there because she's always like, you know, she, she always takes things like a little bit seriously and, you know, it doesn't, you know tries to keep things on track or whatever. Act two is not really about the club anymore. It's not about like Natsuki and Yuri. Um, it's a lot more about Monica and Monica's desperate attempts to get you, the player, to dislike everything about the game except for her. And Yuri is one of the best vehicles for that because she's like so, she can like get obsessive and um, has more of a potential to like just be, like make you like really uncomfortable with the club. Than, than like Natsuki, I guess. And so like Yuri is more Monica's chosen vehicle for making you feel that way. At what point in act one does Monica start like making changes to the game? It's, it's really hard to say. I think the turning point is basically like the chapter after this one where Sayori is like noticeably feeling down or like something is wrong. That's probably around the point where like Monica is realizing that like the protagonist is only going to get into a deeper like romance with the other character and that and that like she kind of needs to try to do something about it to like steer you away from that so i think it's probably around the next chapter that like monica starts starts feeling that way the the entire like the entire game she's like we don't really know the exact influence or amount of influence that she has on certain things life doesn't always have happy endings Sometimes there's just things that are out of our control, and I don't think it's bad to experience that in fiction sometimes. You know, it's a part of life. And what matters is that you care about the character, and you see them in your own way, and you, um, and that they, you know, they give you those feelings, or they teach you something, or, I don't know, they um, provide a unique experience for you in some way. And yeah, I think the way that things uh, turn out in the end is, is going to shape that in some way or another. I can't decide what Monica's name would have been if it was Japanese, because I wanted it to be Monica. Let's see what Monica has to say. It's like number two for Sayori. The more you write about the same character, like the more uh, critical Monica gets. And like you're, she starts to like tease you a little bit, or she's like, you should really try a different style, because <laughs> I don't want you to like get closer to this character. They all care enough about the club to do this you know, for the sake of the club. It was pretty interesting to frame it a little differently in act two for there to be like, you know, that additional bit of strife there because things are getting like extra tense and weird. One, because of Monica's meddling and two, like Sayori is not around to make the club like a more comfortable environment, I guess. So, you know, these sorts of situations just end up being approached differently. Oh, it was really fun for like after Monica goes and she's like, oh, so it's like Sayori going next and Yuri's like, I'll go next. Cause she like, <laughs> she like gets in her own head so much that like she like saw Monica doing it and she's like, she's like, oh my god, like that's so like I have to do this, you know? Cause she like gets so into the idea of like expressing herself, so she's just like so intense. She's like, I'll go next, and then like it's only after she gets up there that she like realizes what she just put herself into. Monica's memories of like the way the club was like you know before you played the game or in general like memories of memories that the characters have you know like like what is the context of them i guess is sort of what you're asking like did the club exist or whatever i like that's something that's like weirdly philosophical because it's like at any point in our existence like for all we know like our universe could have just like blipped into existence five minutes ago and every all of our memories and everything that happened in the past could have just been fabricated at that creation point of the universe. You never know. <clears throat> so I guess it would be the same for the game. I named her Monica because like I wanted I wanted her name to stand out in a way. Cause she like obviously serves a different purpose in the game. That's the first reason. Monica is like a good kind of typical like popular girl name if that makes sense, you know? 
or that's like the way that I thought about it. I feel like in a lot of media, you hear like the popular girl, they're always named like, I don't know, Monica or like Becky. I don't know. <laughs> like it was a pretty, it was just something I like decided pretty easily early on and it just always felt right to me. I didn't have to deliberate over it that much. That just like really felt like her name. Yeah, this is a chapter where it's like Osiris like, you know, getting really sad. Something is clearly up with Monica, even if you don't know about the fourth wall breaking yet, but like, it's sort of implied that Monica is having some weird back and forth with Sayori, because she's like, oh, like, um, I'll go talk to her, and then it's like, you never find out what she talked to her about. And that's, that's always kept, like, ambiguous, you know, because like, not knowing the full picture with Monica's involvement just like gives you this kind of anxiety uh, surrounding it, you know? Just the direct call out at this point, because you go with, you go with like a character all three times, and Monica's like something's going on. Like, are you like you know flirting with her? Like, what are you doing to my club? It'd be terrible if something bad happened to her. Monica was like playing innocent. What could have happened? <laughs> I feel so bad for Yuri here. Monica's like, uh, well, like, okay, well Natsuki is good at baking, but like, I don't know what to like, you know. <laughs> like, what can Yuri do? It's not like she thinks that Yuri actually has no talent, but like in the context of the festival, it's like she doesn't know like everything Yuri is good at. Um, so it's like she just can't <laughs> come up with something. He was like, I'm useless. Which is funny because in Act 2, it's the other way around. Like here, Monica's trying to come up with something and she like feels bad and Yuri's like, oh, I'm useless. In Act 2, Monica's literally like, Yuri, just do whatever you want. And Yuri is like, I'm not useless, you know. <laughs> Monica's actually like the most talented person here and makes Natsuki upset. Yeah, it was, it was interesting, like, changing the environment with Sayori not being there, if that makes sense. Monica has to actually kind of hold her own, but she's not perfect either. She's uh, just a very normal person, aside from her, like, destroying the world. <laughs> Monica sucks. Uh, believe it or not, that is something that I've uh, talked about before. The decision to give someone different colored stockings came before giving them to Monica. I think I was like, I think I just felt like, you know, I want to give, I was like, I want to give one of the characters black stockings. So just as like a little personal detail. And it was like, um, I was thinking about like Yuri, but I was like talking about it with other designers a little bit. And it was like, I don't know. She's not like, it, it doesn't feel like something she would like deliberately do to like draw attention to herself in that way, if that makes sense. But I'm like, you know what? Like it would make sense for Monica. Cause like she, you know, she's kind of the differentiated character anyway, and in various ways. And she's like the, uh, the confident one, that's that's kind of how it worked out. Uh, the room conversation, you probably mean like act three when you're alone in the classroom with Monica. Uh, I haven't timed it actually. And it also depends on like reading speed, I guess. I would say on average, it could probably go on for about two hours before Monica starts repeating topics. Actually, let's go back. Let's like pay a little more attention to Monica, Monica's dialogue. So of course the protagonist says something like extremely dense there, but then he's like, oh yeah, like I'm just, dang it, I'm just used to thinking that way. like. It's, it was actually like terrible for me to say. And he's already second guessing himself. You should take a little responsibility, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. Let's just um, make our way past that line. Well, I mean, that's actually, never mind. It's kind of important, right? Because the whole point of Monica like saying these things is that it's a complete role reversal where Monica is not taking the game seriously because it's just a game. So she's literally like making fun of like all the horrible things that are going on in the way that oftentimes like the player of a game would, you know, people who like play the Sims and they like kill them off in really funny ways or whatever. And they just like make fun of like this, I don't know, this horrible suffering that happens in video games. When I was a kid and we, we played the Sims, like I would remember like my friends or whatever, like just like doing these horrible things to them, like trapping them in rooms and like removing the ladder from the swimming pool and like watching them drown. And it was like so funny to them, but I just like, I felt so horrible like watching that, you know? It was like really like heartbreaking and like sad to me. Despite that game obviously being nothing about like like the characters' emotions, it was just like that stuck out to me so much. I think it was from that point, like thinking back on that, made me um, start evaluating the uh, relationship that like people have with games and the characters, you know, and how certain games like make you feel empathy for the characters in other games, you're literally just like, it's just a game, so you're gonna get over it and it doesn't matter. I thought it would just be a really interesting role reversal for Monica to be making fun of like their misery and being like, it's just a game, it doesn't matter. Because that's literally how she's feeling at this point. And she's expecting you, the player, to feel the same way because you're literally playing this game, but you don't because if you're playing like you know, a visual novel or a dating sim, it's likely for you to have, like, be caring about the characters and you wanting the best for them. Monica doesn't really understand that. So in a sense, she she's, like, more detached than you are. 
and that's why she's like making these horrible comments and like just kind of laughing about like the horrible things that are going on. Uh, that's that's really what I was what I was going for with that sort of behavior. I probably know a lot more than you think. When Yuri mentions that she reads horror, in, in Act 1, Monica's like, Oh, I wouldn't expect that from you, Yuri. Um, and in Act 2, now she's saying, I would expect that from you. It suits your personality. So that's another, like, interesting difference. This special poem, I, I probably won't go into, like, full detail with all of them, because some of them are just, like, really deliberately um, cryptic and amb ambiguous, but this one was written from their perspective of Monica, because this is around the time where Monica is really starting to uh, experiment with like mortality in her universe. She's like so casual about the whole thing because at this point she feels so detached from you know her the universe that she's in that um it's almost like it doesn't really matter to her anymore you know and the feeling of her you know like feeling physical pain or doing that sort of thing to herself she describes it as exhilarating because it's something that is her allowing her to feel something in this universe that has become so incredibly meaningless to her so that that's what this one was about. This is fun to do as well, making Monica like appear in front of the text like that. All of the all of the poem stuff uh, in this chapter is the same as in Act One, except for Monica, of course. Um, yeah, until of course we get to Monica, and she kind of starts off the same. But uh, we don't have the skip button available because it's a uh, entirely separate block of dialogue in, in the code in the script. And then of course um, Monica says some like really messed up things about Natsuki. And again, like this has to do with the whole thing I explained before, where I was going for um, Monica not taking the game seriously because it's just a game, and she she mistakenly thinks that the player sees it as the same way, where it's like okay to just like make light of it when most likely that's not okay at all, and it's just like making the player feel really uncomfortable. Yeah, Monica's poem is different here too. This is like part two of her her first hole in wall poem where you put the two together and it like kind of finishes the story. And it's uh, very obvious after the fact what the poem is about. It's about her like having her first glimpse into the uh, the universe outside of her own and it causing like her own uh, perspective of her universe to like fall apart. And I guess this is the, uh, this piece is the same as in act one as well. When Monica's face appears, it's like front, like dead front and center on the screen. And that was like a lot of fun to do as well. This was fun to do as well. Like making Natsuki forget about the events of the other day. I, th I think Monica did that because she knows that like she can't make Natsuki and Yuri hate each other to the point where the club cannot continue. One, because like that would probably seize the progression of the game, which would foil Monica's plans. And two, Monica still cares about the club to some degree because she can't like, you know, it's something that is still a product of her passion and it's Despite her her change in uh, in perspective, it's something that is like probably always going to mean something to her. And this is uh, fairly similar to uh, Act One when she talks about practicing piano. But uh, there's one difference here. Uh, in Act One, in Act One, she says that like she's only just started playing, and in Act Two, she says that she's been practicing for a while, uh, which is a very very a subtle nod to the fact that time is passing differently for her. And she makes a more direct reference this time around to that she's like writing a song, because of course she is writing a song for you. Th this is interesting because the way Monica phrases this when she's like, did something happen just now? Monica obviously knows what's up, but she's almost playing innocent. So she's like, so you don't know anything. From the player's perspective, that's like Monica is saying like, it sounds like Monica is equally curious to know what's going on. But really, Monica is saying that almost as like relief to yourself, where she's like, okay, so you still don't know anything, you know, just confirming that, that you don't know this about her yet. So that phrase like means something different to uh, Monica versus the player. And here Monica like, you know, is like meaner about Yuri as opposed to um, act one. Detached from reality, totally given up on people, spends so much time in her own head, starved for social interaction. This of course is just a modification of the, uh, the Save Me poem in act one. It's like in the in the way that her universe starts breaking apart and getting corrupted when you quit the game. As I uh, explained yesterday, it's like the same thing is kind of happening to the poem. Of course, she just sneaks this little thing in the end, because that uh, at this point obviously has personal meaning for Monica. One effect I wanted to do, but I guess um, just ended up not coding it, was like once you reach the bottom of the poem and it says delete her, I wanted it to be like you scroll back up and uh, like the rest of the poem is just gone. Like it's just blank. That would have been pretty cool. <laughs> this was a lot of fun too, regarding, you know, Monica's writing tip of the day. I talked about that a little bit last stream as well, but like how you can like do fun stuff with like, you know, in act one, it just sounds like she's like a tutorial character where she's like giving you a tip to save your game. <laughs> she's like, huh, what am I talking about? Just 
silly breaking the fourth wall was good comedy in a game but now it obviously means a lot more than that and now she's like she's not laughing about it because she is she's realizing that the game has given her a chance to talk to the player right here and so that's why like her demeanor just completely changes and she's like can you hear me tell me you can hear me because she like since the game the game itself is already trying to reach the player through that dialogue monica thinks that she can like actually like take this chance to like interact with the player in a way that is like part of the game and she's like so desperate for that that she like really wants to take that opportunity but of course uh the game will have none of it and just takes her right back out of it and moves on with the script and then you get the uh the next special poem after this i think originally i just had it happen like at the end of every chapter but or maybe no you know what it is i wasn't able to put it at the end of the last chapter because i needed the scene from yuri and monica in the classroom arguing immediately snap to the poem mini game right because it's like yuri glitches out because monica like you know causes the end of the scene and then it's like instantaneous poem mini game that was uh, necessary right there. And so the uh, special poem I put here instead. This is a fun little uh, anti-climax or anti-jump scare. You know, people are like afraid to stare at the dot because this is a this is a classic jump scare setup. And so it was just like a cute little, cute little thing that I wanted to do. You know, Monica's really the only one who like cares that much about the club. It's like the player and the protagonist care more about the girls. And Natsuki has her preferences and like, you know, who knows what Yuri wants. If I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica has not spent that much time, like, very directly and deliberately breaking the fourth wall. But this, this is a statement that is kind of, like, it's, like, more direct. It's a little more difficult to interpret in other ways. The other interpretation, like, in-universe would be that, like, everyone kind of guilted slash manipulated you into joining the club. And so you weren't like given a choice in that sense, but she obviously very literally means um, the game did not give you a choice. So um, yeah, Monica's like, she's probably been feeling this way a lot recently, but like Natsuki sort of uh, brought it to the surface. Like, you know, Monica feeling like really dejected and that everything that she's doing is meaningless and that she won't be able to get what she wants in the end, both with the club and in achieving her, uh, <clears throat> her romance with the player. Yeah, so it's, you know, it, it's what I was saying earlier where despite everything that's going on, like, Monica still cares about the club in general, you know? It's still, it's, it's still, like, something she was passionate about. Like, starting the club for what it is. So it makes sense for her to care about the club on that level, but maybe she also wants to get new members so badly because she uh, thinks that there might be more potential new members that are like the player, you know? And she'll have more of a chance to reach out to the uh, universe outside her own. Yeah, Monica is trying a little bit harder here to directly reach the player. She's like getting more desperate and she's becoming less afraid of breaking the fourth wall and trying to like ease, like ease into it. She is ready to kind of reveal everything here, I think. She's just trying to like, like lead into it rather than dropping the bomb. But there's something in the game script that probably like understands where the end of each chapter is. And so, uh, the game progresses, like the game reaches the end of the chapter despite Monica having more to say. And so, uh... It doesn't allow her to finish her thought, and she just uh, very sadly fades out while uh, trying to stop the game from doing so. Mon Monica mains Fox. <laughs> um, there was a back back like October of last year. There was a uh, a tweet on the Team Cell Auto Twitter account about who each of the characters would main in Melee, and it was basically like Monica just mains Fox because she like did her research and uh, saw that Fox is like the best character, so she just like mains Fox because of that. How did I find the voice of Monica? Um, I had, I had a few people in mind, but uh, what it came down to was like, of, of course, the, the most important aspect of her, her voice was like how she sounds when she's singing. I wanted her to like be like a good singer, so like I wanted someone who was like you know uh, kind of trained in, in like music or voice. The other interesting challenge was I didn't I didn't want her to sound like a like super professional. I wanted her to have kind of like the um, like the cutesy side of her voice and so there were like certain there are certain singers who do like um, singing for like have done singing for like musical theater and stuff like that um, or like you know more like jazzy stuff where like the way that they sing wasn't fully uh, what I was looking for and so I finally out of uh, yeah out of, out of everybody I was considering I went with my best friend's cousin who has a lot of uh, experience with music and has a great voice, but she was also a great fit because, like, she is uh, was around Monica's age, 
and so like her voice naturally sounded like you know that age character as opposed to other more professional singers who were like in their 20s and they sounded a little bit more like an adult um you know uh so so it just like ended up working out she had like a really amazing amazing uh like voice for it um so i'm, I'm quite happy with with how that turned out yeah if you want monica and blaze blue you gotta talk to uh, arxis about that yeah Mo monica monica's name is like not a Japanese name because it's, she's designed to like stand out you know there's something different about her and that kind of shows in uh, her name as well oh yeah um you know Monica's topic in the space classroom where she like met and starts talking about Smash yeah that's because like I have a history in the Smash community a lot of my work was in like modding Smash working on Project M and 20xx tournament edition so it was like a big part of my um history as a developer but of course the game blew up and you know I just added that in there as like a a joke for the Smash community because naturally like a lot of them know me and they're gonna be playing my game so it was like a joke for them but then the game obviously blew up <laughs> to be much larger than that and I was getting tweets like every single day asking about like why Monica started talking about Smash and I was just like its purpose is an inside joke kind of like already played out so it, it was just easier to remove instead of like confusing people in that way.